Hey, Rob, did you know that our parts are in space? Where? Sp- <laughs> space. Yeah, not like Katy Perry's. Not like that, Taylor Swift's blank space. space <laughs> real space. Oh, like, not Katy Perry space. I get it. <laughs> All right, guys, today we're going over an old project from the history books, circa 2018, 2019, the early days of Vision Miner, the early days of Peak and Ultim, even in the industry. And this is one of the first projects we did that was very high level for a high level company. We printed space parts for NASA, but really it was a NASA contract. It was advanced fuel research with Andy Carlson. Thank you. Shout out. We love you, brother. And uh, basically, this is a very complex project project with many different parts and many different methodologies. And so today we're going to dive in and go through what we went through to get these final parts. Starting with what's described in the article by the Additive Report as California Firm is a one-stop shop for anything high temp. This was written in July of 2020. Fisher Miner bills itself as a one-stop shop for anything high temp, according to Patrick Smith, the company's CEO and founder. That is true. And now we've got SLA, SLS, 3D scanners, and all the software. So now in 2025, we're even more better. Yeah, we cover essentially the entire spectrum of 3D printing, but our specialty is still high temp, and that comes from our heritage, which is the last almost decade of printing high temp on open material machines. Yes. So this particular project, Andy Carlson. Do you remember when he called us up? No, that was many years ago, but I do remember An- Andrew. Yeah. Hello, Andrew. Shout out. Andy, you the man. Uh, he was with Advanced Fuel Research, and they're a NASA contractor, and they make parts and things and projects for things that NASA needs. In this particular case, in the beginning, we had no idea what we were working on. He's like, I can't tell you, but I will be able to tell you when the white paper comes out. This is the white paper, and this basically is a bunch of, I, my, I say, read the TDS all the time. Read the, This is too much. So this goes into absolutely everything they did in this project which is fascinating. And I was directly involved in that project. And why don't you tell him what Andy said? Because remember, he was looking, he was like, no one can do it. Yeah, yeah. The biggest thing, they were reaching out to multiple companies. That's Except actually, this guy yeah, did it. it. It's mentioned in the white paper. They reached out to several. Uh, and we were the only ones who were able to do it. And that sort of led to our specialty in tiny, 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 itsy bitsy parts in high temp materials. At a certain point in the project, he did mention, hey, it's part of the fuel system on the spacewalk suit, on the new spacewalk suit. So we knew that at some point. So much for national security. (laughs) Basically what happened is, hey, we need these parts in carbon fiber peak, and they're super tiny and super small, and nobody's able to do them. And so we're like, we'll give it a shot. We can figure this out. And so it began, and we went through a lot of different Parts, styles of parts, thicknesses, all kinds of different stuff. And in the end... Well, some of it was impossible. I, we're like, we have to adapt this a little bit. Like, yeah. Well, so to get something... like I, I believe this is one of the originals, right? This is one of the first ones. The parts we got at first were these sort of... Um, you know, maybe half a centimeter thick, very small, fine uh, uh, cross hatching. I don't know if you can see the light through that. You can see the part is actually... These are channels that go all the way through the part. This is where we started, and then it changed it up to be more like this, where it's a very thin part, but it has straight lines, and then they were going to mount each one of these little holes at different angles to get the channels effect, right? Because it's just filtering something in, in, a, in a fuel system. It's advanced fuel research, the company, right? We tried uh, different versions of these. There are actually drawings to... in here of what they look like. Yeah, 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 precisely. So we had we had this whole thing, which is exact dimensions we'll and specifications uh, for what the part is supposed to be. You know, this area needs to be exactly these sizes and everything else like that. And hitting that was pretty good. We could we we managed to do that uh, and get it consistently. Was I using a 0.25 nozzle? I think we were using 0.25 or a 0.2. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We had to use this extra small nozzle with carbon get. fiber peak, which rec- yep. is recommended to be printed carbon fiber filled materials. It's like a minimum of 0.25 layer height. Uh, 0.4 or 0.6 recommended. Yeah. That's what, yeah, it is what it says. And I do recall we, we dealt with a lot of jams. We could get, what, maybe 10 to 15 of these out before it jammed, and we had to replace the nozzle every single time, right? Less. Yeah, yeah, maybe 5 to 10 yeah. max. 
But we got it. We nailed it. We could get these consistently. But they were like, all right, this isn't quite working either. Uh, and so they moved on to a different style, which would have been just a pure crosshatch, like so. And then eventually ended up on the crosshatch with the circle inside. We'll talk more about the geometrical pattern we had to create in the 3D file to get the slicer tool path to actually lay that down in a single layer without overlapping. Because what was happening was they would then take this part, any of these parts, they would take this and actually layer them flat and then compress them together with heat and melt it into one part with all these tiny little channels. So it was more about getting the raw material that was going to go into a jig and then be turned into one big, bigger solid part for the filtration system. Ooh, here's my notes. So it, it's not even an end use part, actually a part that gets made and then put into another process to make the final part. So very, very fascinating. Um, do we have a page? Oh, wow. Yeah, that is your handwriting. Paper came out in 2020. Down from 0.24. Like mid-COVID lockdowns, the, the paper came out and everything. So that was actually really encouraging in the middle of COVID. Oh, my gosh. It's like, hey, we did something cool last year before all this craziness. 15 millimeters a second. Single extrude. Min, yeah, this is fascinating. Min is width, 30%. What did we think oh, about? this is, the, I, have, I made notes for all different iterations. And so this one is extrusion width down to 0.2 from 0.24, retraction up to three from two, temperature up to 415 from 400, cooling up to 15% from zero, speed up to 25 from 15. Single extrusions, min length, 0.2 millimeters, min yep. width, 30%. And this is like, like the min length and mid width is, the min length is the shortest extrusion that the printer will do. So if you have a tiny little area, with, Single a, tiny, extrusion. with a tiny little gap, then it'll, if, unless it's this long, it won't do it. A lot of this was tricking the slicer into printing this because yeah. they were like, dude, what are you trying to do here? And do we have a picture of the file made of the cross hatches? Of the file? I, do you think the these files the are geometry. on the server? I'd love to we, slice we, them. We definitely have, have the files somewhere. Guys, check out visionminer.com. We are here to help you. We're passionate about what we do, and we like to, man, I love when people call and just say, hey, I'm doing this crazy project. And I'm like, well, tell me about it. That's cool. We end up getting them the right machine, the right materials. Often people th go overkill. They say, I need peak. You don't. I can save you a lot of money and make your life a lot easier. We care about our customers. And by helping you, we help the industry so that more people know about high temp printing. So do not be afraid to reach out, email us, ask us questions. We want to help you and give you the right answer. Visionminer.com. So we'll try to show you a, a, a render on screen here, but basically the entire part, imagine you have uh, a bunch of chopsticks and you're gonna make the part this, you know, the size of this table and you want none of the chops, you wanna make this cross hatch, but none of the chopsticks can overlap. So you have to lay them all down and, and just end to end and side to side. And that was the geometry that Andy came up with to assist the slicer and tool path so that you could lay down all this material in tiny little like one millimeter, two millimeter extrusions to get the final geometry with the perfect thickness. Because anytime you're, you're squeezing plastic through a nozzle here, right? So Extruding. You know, if you're doing a line and then doing a cross over that line, in the very middle, there's going to be two lines to two levels, two layers. Oh, yes, here it is. Um, here, check. We'll have to scan that page. Yeah, yeah, we'll get, to, uh, get a high-res version for this, but you can see there each little section is its own section. And that went from 3 millimeter to 0.5 millimeter thick. Oh, yeah, and this, this part, we don't even have this part anymore, but this one, it was just a circle. I think this was more trying to print the final part just as a part. This was my first real project where i was like dang maybe i know what i'm doing yeah yeah <laughs> well because i love solving problems it, it, normal stuff is very boring and this was just a huge problem like can this be done and i was like i'm gonna figure it out and uh i'm proud of the fact that i i did you know that's a that's and it a, was fun it was a, hard though it's a huge principle for anybody out there if you got a print shop if you got a printer if you're just printing trinkets and you're dealing with the jam it's all about perseverance you got to keep going 
keep going, keep going, and then often you get the win. Uh, but if you if you quit, if you quit too early, you never win. Now some things, okay. Anyway, we could go into a philosophical discussion with this, but the thing is, keep going. It's worth it. Yeah, fascinating. Here's the part. I'll find this PDF and we'll put these on screen. But here's the part where they took is like a die where they put the substrate, the 3D printed part inside of it, put it in the die, and then heated it up to remelt it into the perfect shape. Wow. So the goal of this thing Look was to this. absorb formaldehyde and, um, yeah, basically to, to absorb those two things because you don't want those in a vacuum in space. Yeah, ammonia absorption capacity versus... And there's other things I saw in there. For instance, uh, I'll, I'll find it, but they, they would throw it in a furnace kiln and they were like, yeah, everything else just melted away. And just to get the carbon? 400C and peak didn't really deform. It turned to carbon, but temperature used was 800 nitrogen carrier gas. In several experiments, 800 uh, Celsius polymer carbon fiber filament samples rapidly inserted into a tube furnace preheated to 450 C, 500, 550, and 600 C, and held it above temperatures for 30 minutes. It was found that the carbonization conditions did not have a strong effect on shape retention for the peak polymer at 600 Celsius. <laughs> uh, for those that don't know, we print peak generally between 400 and 450 Celsius. Too hot, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's beyond melted. That's flowing. So carbonization at a higher temp, that's fascinating. The main issue they had was they just couldn't find somebody who could tune and slice to this extreme extent. Right. Um, this is a testament to how we operate here at Vision Miner. And this was done on a very basic machine. Oh, wow. We sold flash forwards at one point. That's hilarious. My first printer was a flash forge. Absolutely great. Cincinnati, Colossus. Colossus, I think, I don't mm. know, sort of disappeared. In, 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 I wish we had a Colossus. Mitsubishi Basic Colossus was basically a huge trailer with a giant pellet extruder printer in it. It was literally a shipping container. Yeah, sick. With a pellet extruder. I want one. Full volume. It was awesome. You just go to the beach, park up, gather a bunch of plastic, melt it down, make some benches, leave them on the beach, go to the next beach. It, it, yeah, it's that simple. Love it. Love it. Go through the trash cans at the beach, make a bench. Gosh, look at that. I need to update this headshot. What do you guys think? Yeah. By the way, guys, we are an online store that sells everything, 3D printing, 3D scanning, and the software thereof. So if you need SLS, SLA, FDM, don't know what those mean and want to find out, give us a call, shoot us an email. We've got everything you could possibly need, and we're based here in America with American support. I kind of um, like it if you knew what those things meant before you called, to be honest. Yeah, if you don't know what SLA means, please do some Google research first, but we are absolutely here to help you select not only the right equipment, because you know a lot of the times maybe what you're getting is overkill, and you don't need that, or maybe what you're getting is not good enough, and we're here to help you that and consult you just like we have for many years. I love, yeah, giving people what they need, not what costs the most. I mean, this is one of our original projects that really showed us. This gave me confidence. This uh. taught me how to slice. This taught me to read what every single damn setting in a slicer does, even if I think I know what it does. Yeah. Iteration after iteration after iteration. It was fun. It's like if you like puzzles, you'd be great at 3D printing. Yeah. I mean, because it doesn't look that complex, right? You know, you could throw that under the bamboo and get this If geometry. that was PLA, it would be no big deal. Well, even then, getting that PLA exact thickness across the entirety of the part. Okay, well, I mean, you're still going to have to go back and do the, uh, the methodology of how you design the part. And there's going to be a lot of different things. So when it comes down to hyper-specific, ultra-performance polymer parts, a lot of the time they are ultra-complex or ultra-specific and they need to be done as such, which is why what we do is still somewhat of a trade and a craft. Yeah. Now, AI's coming out. AI's getting better. Uh, we may even see AGI later this year, which would be kind of a scary thought. But it's AGI. Uh, artificial general intelligence, which once that hit is basically when it becomes self-aware. And then once it becomes self-aware, it takes about 10 seconds before it creates for itself artificial super intelligence, which then takes over the world. I, for one, welcome our AI overlords and have always supported them. AI is great. I've always loved AI. Huge fan since day one. So uh, no problem for me. Absolutely. You hear? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm just excited to watch it go down. I mean, yeah. This part was hard. 
and very worth it. So hard things are worth it. There you go. You know? in there. That looks like a perfect... Sorry, ADD. It looks like there's a perfect G in there. Is that like a Mason thing? I don't know. Maybe there's something secret going on in there. Did you see it? Anyway. I, I see it. I 100%. What the... That's actually really trippy. Interesting. It's like too perfect. Anyway. So, a little peek into the world of high temp, our history. Give it a like, leave it a comment down below if you want to see more of it. And everybody I saw at Rapid, thank you guys so much for coming up and just saying Do how shout much outs. you enjoyed this. You know who you are. Jake. You came up. I think I saw your comment the other day, actually. You said, I'm going to comment, and you'll know it's me. And I'll be like, all right. And I commented back. So, I mean, that is a little dive into one of our... Why I'm the greatest. <laughs> one of our historical <laughs> projects, uh, something we've done. Uh, back in the day, and we got a lot more coming for you. So if you enjoyed this type of content, let us know in the comments down below. Seriously, a little comment makes a big difference. Hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more of it. And um, Subscribe if we will find these files and I will reprint them. Yeah. And I will go through the process. If you want to see it, you have to let me Actually, know. Actually, we could do a whole video. Uh, I, could, I will this. go through hell again for you. On the 22edX. But anyway, if you are in the market for a 3D printer, 3D scanner, advanced engineering mar uh, materials, ultra-performance polymers, we are your one-stop shop. SLA, SLS. 3D printing and 3D scanning. The software, you name it. Yeah. We got you. We got so, all of it. Thanks for watching. And we have, know what we're talking about. Have a positive rest of your day. And see you next time. We'll see you on the next one.